Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today we're going to be getting on with part 3 of our city station build. Right, so the main thing for part 3 is to build the uh, second floor of this building, but before I do that I've got quite a few uh, improvements and suggested amendments to make to the bit we've already done, so I'm going to try and rattle through those relatively quickly at the beginning. But there's quite a few. I had some uh, great comments, uh, a lot of positive feedback on this, so it's gone down really well, and that's much appreciated. So one thing that I did was realise I had more of these stickers than I first thought, so I've actually put a couple on the back column as well. We just had them on the front before, and I've done that on both ends. You can see that. Now while we're here, somebody suggested that a red and yellow bike wasn't particularly uh, contrasting from the rest so I've swapped uh, the yellow bike for a white one it's not a great improvement given that we've got white frames here but hey I don't have that many different colored bikes I must have an azure one somewhere anyway that's there uh, and then for some lighting for this uh, area so people don't get uh, mugged getting their bikes I've just got some lamps to sit on the back of these bits uh, and the whole front of the uh, station will be lit by normal street lights and I don't have street lights throughout Brick Nottingham yet and that's just because I <laughs> haven't got round to it I've got quite a few of them to put in but it's just um, a bit of a <laughs> thankless task really so that will happen um, so at the front here we'll have uh, tall lamp posts both looking that way to light the front of the station and the taxi rank and also pointing that way to light what will be, well, a street here. There'll be a street right in front of this entire station. So uh, don't worry about that. Now, while we're talking about streets and cars, I may as well do my car of the day, so I definitely don't forget later. So in the first part, we did uh, the taxi from set 60050, train station. And in the second part, we added a taxi from set 60050. So what better to add this time than a taxi from set 60050. And this one has got unique number plates again, front and back, just so it's uh, more realistic for those of us who are a bit pedantic. And I thought I'd have a taxi driver who'd got out and was maybe talking to one of the other taxi drivers further up the queue as always seems to be the case. Right, so that's that job done. Now moving to the inside, there was uh, quite a few people who mentioned that there was no uh, departures board or anything like that on the inside. And I did have some uh, panel pieces that would be appropriate for that, which was sort of one by four by three. But wherever I hung them off the ceiling or off this sort of tile layer or whatever, it just always looked too big because it descend far too much into the uh, walkways and it looked like everyone would bang their heads on it. So we haven't really got the height here that you might have in some grand stations uh, in order to have it right up here or something like that. So instead, I've got these pieces, which again are from that same set that this sticker comes from and the taxis 60050 and they've got the logo on and the next two arrivals. So it doesn't say what platform they're coming in on or anything like that. But, um, you know, I think it's better than nothing. So I thought I'd put a pair of those in one either side of the main doorway. And I think that at least is an attempt at uh, fixing that problem. Very good. Now, another thing people weren't that keen on was the hanging baskets. Uh, with the flowers in and that's mainly because they're not really hanging <laughs> which is a fair criticism so I was never wedded to those so I'm going to take those off so what I'm going to replace them with is these which are shields from the series 9 heroic knight and people who've been watching my channel right from the beginning will know that I put uh, these shields on my public or municipal buildings because the crown is the logo of Brick Nottingham. It's also over the castle, Brick Nottingham Castle. So uh, I thought a pair of those, these silver ones looking very sort of regal, 
would look quite grand next to these big pillars and sort of give it the sigil or the sign of Brick Nottingham. Yeah. So tell me what you think of that. I think that's a great improvement, actually. So I'm glad that, that was brought up. Now, as a result, what I really need to do if I move these uh, taxis to one side is add some more flowers to match these ones. So I thought I've just got these tubs on my last haul, these sort of dark brown tubs, uh, and they'll match the dark brown of these flower boxes. And I thought I could just have one of those sort of on the bottom corner step of each side. Obviously, I'll have to add the flowers from these. Some of these flowers are also yellow, which um, coincides with the wall colour, but I don't mind that. I mean, I think it's a different yellow, and it's sort of a good uh, contrast to the uh, dark pink, so I'm not too worried about that. And at least they'll be against a grey background now, so I think that looks good. Add some on this side as well. There we are. So now we've got the best of both worlds. We've got the flowers. Yeah, breaking up the grey, which I very much like, actually. And these lovely new shields. Great, so let's put the taxis back. Fantastic. Now, another area that I had uh, a lot of issues with and a lot of uh, good comments on was the... Hmm, Am I going to be able to lift this up? Was the big entrance or exit, depending how you look at it, at the back and what to do with it because it didn't have any sort of uh, ticket uh, gantries or anything like that. And um, I thought it needed something. And I'd come up with this large uh, sort of old-fashioned turnstile, uh, double turnstile, but it was just too big and clunky. And a lot of people agreed that it was uh, too big for the area. So what I thought I would do... I'm also going to add some sort of ticket touch points or whatever they're called, like oyster touch points or things. But I thought I'd just add another of these handrails, but this time with a six long bar. So it kind of mirrors what's going on, on the outside. And that I thought I'd just put in the middle. Uh, and then I can have the ticket machine touch point things on the outsides. And let me see if I can get this up to an angle where you can see that. It's quite hard to pick up, as you'd probably imagine, especially with these cabs on and things. Oh, there we go. Can you see that through the door? There's another handrail there. We'll see that better from the other side. So I'm very happy with that improvement as well. Another thing I did was change this new sign. Before it was on one of the bracket pieces, much like the one on the back is, but it kind of looked a bit funny because if this is meant to be stonework, then the stonework suddenly stopped for what would be a new sign and the stonework would have been very old uh, and then sort of started up again at the other side. So what I did was just change it slightly so there was a 1x4 plate there that's in line with the tiles, which means the sign was sort of added to the consistent stonework uh, that's always been there, and I think that is a good improvement. Right, so a bit lower down, you can see that handrail a bit better. Uh, but while we're down here, I thought I'd show you this, where I've also changed one of the columns out for different bricks, including a brick with studs on both sides. And for the outside element, I thought I'd add an advert, and this is for the fairground that's coming to Brick Nottingham. I haven't obviously started my fairground, but when I do, this will be a nice advert for it. So people arriving at the station will know that the fair is in town. And it's got two kids on it with some uh, candy floss and some rubber ducks. And that is from the set 60216 Downtown Fire Brigade. I've got a few of those sticker sheets, and that's the one that comes from there. So I can have a few more of those adverts around my city. And then on the inside, I thought I could have a train timetable just so people can check what time certain trains come and go. Now, I couldn't find uh, an appropriate sticker or piece in my collection for that. The closest I could find was this bus schedule that's there next to the beach party advert. And that's from the uh, bus station set 60154. 
And I thought if I was very clever with scissors and cut off the green element at the top that says bus schedule and maybe trimmed the bottom a little as well, I could fit that on a two by three tile as well for the inside. So that's what I'm going to try. Right, so I've done that. And there it is. So we've still got the map and all the list of times. But uh, we don't have the bit that says bus. So I think that works rather well. I'm going to stick that on the other side of this modified brick. And it's a height that this guy can see and use when he's uh, using the ticket machines. So I'm very happy with that as well. Now on the back, it's a similar story. There's quite a few things that I've changed. One is that I didn't like the old sign for the station name, which just said Lego City, when the front of the station said City Station. Uh, and I realised that, why I didn't consider this before, I don't know, but I realised that I had the sticker sheets, which I used for all the taxis, uh, and they've all got this City Station logo on. So I actually had quite a few of these stickers as well. So I've swapped this out, get rid of that, for City Station. So it's got the same sign on the front and the back now. And what's more, I had two more to make a double-sided uh, City Station sign that I can use in my platform area, right in the middle of the middle platform. And then you'll be able to see it from either side, depending on what train line you're on. So uh, yeah, that works really well as well. So fantastic suggestion, that one. So I'll just put this to one side for use later. Another simple but fantastic solution was just swapping the paper shop around. And you can see now I've got the newspaper rack on the right rather than the left, and the drinks are on the left. And that just makes it a bit more open and accessible. And I think uh, it looks a lot better. And I've switched around some of the newspapers now so they're not all stacked in the same direction. Uh, yeah, and I think it looks uh, much more open and natural now. So thank you very much for that suggestion as well. And just to finish off the paper shop, I'm going to add one of these stacks of newspapers daily, the Lego News, and that's from the set 60097 City Square. I think that goes rather well there. So that's good, next to the sliding door. And then comes the question of touch points for your tickets. And I thought I'd have a very simple, low profile sort of touch point for checking your ticket when you get on or off the train. I was thinking of going without anything at all uh, and just having it as a sort of conductor based system. But I figured that this wouldn't do any harm for those who've got sort of smart cards or something. And I'd sort of get them uh, into as much of the corner as possible so as not to block the lovely open sort of plan feel that we've got going on on the ground floor. And I think just three of those, one at the shop door and one at either side of this new uh, hand railing that we can see a lot better from this side actually, <laughs> um, is, is enough really. I think that looks good. I don't want anything too heavy that would obstruct this and I really didn't want to move all the glassware from the new shop onto the inside and have that a solid wall. Another small change was to add some lighting. So I've just got four of these two by two sort of shoe pieces to add to the underside of each of these. Now you'll probably barely see these unless you're looking from completely the right angle, which will be pretty hard when it's uh, <laughs> right in the middle of everything. But nonetheless, I like adding detail, even if I only know it's there. So that's that, that's that sorted. And then somebody suggested that having eight seats in a row was a bit repetitive, a bit boring. So why not do something different with the end one? And I think that's a great idea, especially when they suggested that I have a baggage area. So I like that idea. So what I thought I'd do is just create a sort of small thing out of these two by two, uh, two by one uh, panel pieces, a little sort of area to put suitcases. Now the only downside to this is that they will be loose. So when I start moving this about, which admittedly I'll be doing less and less uh, now it's sort of fully built, um, 
they will potentially fall out. So I've got my little bag of spare suitcases and I won't use these fun ones with the stickers on because you won't be able to see them. Those stickers incidentally are from uh, 76051 Superhero Airport Battle and they're really good. They just say things like Wakanda and here's one. BLL on a minifigure face and so on. There's a few. I think there's one on a black one. There we go. Sokovia. These probably all mean something to uh, superhero fans. So I just thought I'd put um, a random assortment of these in. Oh, that's fiddly. Uh, and then I thought I'd have a man who works at the station, who looks after the baggage area and maybe he's got somebody else's precious violin case with violin presumably uh, so you can be sort of on the platform there looking cheery and maybe there's a backpack as well quite a nice piece put that there so therefore we've got a nice baggage area at the end still in red still looking in keeping and we can even have another rail employee pushing a dolly, and I have included one this time, of the uh, suitcases to a different location. And if you don't know, they're actually held in. They won't fall off. You're going to get the handle of the suitcase and you can actually push it through these slats and therefore they can sort of wiggle a little bit, but they won't fall off. So that's a very secure uh, tip for adding suitcases to a trolley. So that's a great addition as well. Thanks very much for that one. Now we better get on with the actual build. And for that, as always, I think we better start with the floor. And here is my roof, or rather my floor for the second floor. And it's a bit of an odd shape at the moment. It's gonna fit like that as you'd probably guess, uh, uh, quite firmly on those uh, bricks at the back. And the bit that I'm using to support it, so the bit that's sort of underneath this light bluish gray layer is yellow. And that's so it will huh, seamlessly connect with the floor below to continue up that yellow sort of sandstone type color. And uh, this bit sticking out is deliberate because I'm going to actually have an overhang for the entire length but these two plates, for example, and these two over here will actually be held in position from above. So it will have this kind of like overhang a bit like that, which I think is in keeping with an old building as well. And you can see this sort of matches with the top of the pillars at the front. And that sign is slightly recessed as we, uh, as we know. Right, so that isn't recessed. We've got a little bit of brown, so there's a perfect correlation with the stairs uh, below. In that we've got some brown plate there. I'm going to create a sort of um, barrier so people can't fall down the stairs in a moment. But you can see that's just held together in a normal way. And it'll get a lot more strength from the floor above as well. Uh, and I don't really mind that black stripe there. So yeah, so I'm going to probably put the station uh, ground floor to one side for a moment so I can work on this alone properly. Right, so you can see I've just added a few bricks so I can attach those plates on the underside. So you'll have that overhang just by one stud on each of the sides. I think that'll look nice. So uh, to do this floor, I'm actually continuing with my uh, mashup theme of bringing old uh, Lego official train stations to the modern day. And I'm trying to take the best parts of each one and kind of fit them together in a way using modern parts that looks like they haven't just been jumbled together, but does uh, kind of have that nostalgic flow uh, that the ground floor has. So with that in mind, there are two real... Uh, contributors to this that uh, are, are uh, firm favourites of mine from the past. And the first is uh, the train station 7997. And that's the one that has all the yellow pillars with the black overhangs that we've used along our platform edge so far. 
but it also has uh, this lovely sort of black uh, kind of tile layer around only two sides on on that one because it's kind of a backless station and mine's going to be uh, encased so it will need all three sides but I'm planning to use those black tiles uh, the slopes that we've used on the ground floor continuing up onto this floor and I'm going to do that on both ends much like it is on that set with kind of a central structure in the middle. Uh, now that's where the second main influencing set comes in and that's set 4554 Metro Station from 1991 and you'll see that that set is another yellow nostalgic fantastic looking station building and it's a bit of a block that one but it does have this lovely large tower in the middle with lots of the white windows that we've used on the ground floor on the left hand side front so I'm going to continue that theme up into our central much broader tower uh, with those lovely small windows and another pitched roof and some sort of ornate stonework uh, and then it only is left to decide what this floor will be. Well, we've already had sort of uh, signs saying that there's a menu and some uh, a dinner plate. It's not going to be so focused on food. Uh, I'm sure they will serve the uh, pizza and salad that they show on the menu. But um, I'm thinking it's going to be more of a station bar. So I'm going to have the main building in the middle being the bar itself with the barman and uh, all the drinks and bottles and so on. And then one side being a kind of veranda for people to enjoy the view either before they say goodbye to their loved ones or after they've said hello and been reunited uh, and the other side will be mainly dominated by the stairs up but also will have enough room for uh, people to stand and admire the view so onwards uh, so the first thing i need to do is probably get that sort of perimeter uh, wall in with that really sort of low pitched roof and even start some of the ornate brickwork uh, around the edges as well because I don't want it to look identical from the front and the back I want it to look slightly different so from the back it will look more like the uh, 7997 set and from the front it'll look more like the uh, 4554 set cool right so I'm starting to build up the front and the back so the front, I'm adding this sort of profile detail, which is just having plates and then round plates uh, in between them. And it just gives a bit of a uh, interesting texture. It also sort of ties in more with the front being sort of made of columns. So you can see there, I haven't put the tile layer on yet. So it's sort of got that sort of feel to it. And then we've got this black sloped partial roof. And then when we flip around to the other side, You'll see we've got more of the sort of feel of the 7997 set, the sort of panel pieces and the in-between pieces of the one by one round bricks and the gutters as well. So I can continue that sort of theme here with some more black slopes. And some of this is held up by the slopes as well or at least firmly held by them and then you see it'll be this kind of outline of slopes like that so it's going to look quite neat I've got tiles on all the flat surfaces apart from on the inside which I'm not going to tile the floor and then for this hole, I've made a little sort of side bit out of bracket pieces and tiles, and that can come in from underneath. That's not the highest uh, sort of railing to stop minifigures falling over it, but um, nonetheless, it's functional. I don't want to make it too sort of high impact, otherwise it'll look a bit weird. Just add a little sort of pillar post there, and one of those sort of small railing pieces as well. I'll show you. There we are. That's a better angle, isn't it? So you would sort of come up the stairs here and then come round 
to there. And we haven't got a great deal of space to work with, which is why things like a disabled access for the bar just isn't possible. But I mean, as I was saying in my comments last time to a couple of people who are suggesting more disabled access, uh, you know, a lot of my buildings don't even have stairs to get up <laughs> for the able-bodied people, let alone the disabled. So I think we just have to use a bit of artistic license and assume that everything is uh, wheelchair friendly. Right, so there we are. Now on the back, another thing is I've put a uh, bracket piece just there in the middle in black and I want to add a clock uh, so everyone in the station can see what time it is and whether the train is late. And rather than just use the usual sort of boring white clock, I've got this one, which is a two by two uh, tile in black with a black clock sticker on it. And that sticker is actually from the same set we got the fairground uh, advert from, this one from the uh, Downtown Fire Brigade 60216. So that is already proving well worth having. We've got more stickers to use as well, with toilets and warning stripes and all the rest of it. Uh, so I can put that on there. And I think that the black clock with the white face really pops quite well. So that's good. It'd be nice to have a bigger clock, but I don't know, it's just going to start interfering with the uh, floor below otherwise. So that's going to be directly over the city station sign where we've got the opening onto the platform. Right, so clearly I need to duplicate this, but without the stairwell on the other side. And then we'll have a nice uh, complete uh, foundation of this floor uh, with which to then build the central structure, which you can kind of see starts here and we'll go up to about here. That big. So there we are. Stairwell. Other side where we're going to have all the tables and that. And the bar bit in the middle. Now this is all tiled. And there's deliberately one stud sticking out on each side here. And obviously these two jumper plates. So the roof of that can be lifted off so we can look inside as well. So this whole area will come off in one piece bringing that with it but then further to that or just instead you could just remove the middle bit and I think that's uh, good so we can see inside and set up some fun scenes. So there's the back with that sort of uh, continuation of those round plates in the wall. I, I really like that. I might use that uh, again somewhere because it's very subtle but but um, quite effective and I thought I'd just make this a little bit more uh, embellished with one by one square plate, one by one round cone brick and a one by one round plate on the top just to make a kind of, I don't know what the technical name is, but a nice fancy bit on the end of there. So I think that will add even more uh, interesting sort of grandeur to the building. And then the back, it's just as we saw before, with that sort of more utilitarian look, but still nice color with the uh, round bricks and the roofing and this nice uh, guttering and that lovely black clock, which I really like. So yeah, looking good. Right, so the next stage I think is probably to do the structure of the middle bit. And then when we've done that, we can start putting the people and the scenes on the inside, but it'd be silly probably to do it the other way around. Good. So this is starting to come together with the tall windows, as you'd see in the 4554 set. And I like that. We got them on the front and on the back. And I've managed to incorporate another one of these uh, one by two by two bricks with the train logo on. And they were all part of the uh, City Corner set 7641 that we used last time for a bus station in that case, but it's uh, the citywide logo, so that's good. I'll have one there as well. And that's the front, so it'll fit something like that. So you'll be able to see that from the front with all this detail here. And we've got another nice overhang here which sort of echoes the overhang that we're going to have along the front as well. So I like that. And then we turn the corner 
it's not completely symmetrical front to back. Oh, it's a bit fragile at the moment as well. It'll all be held together by the roof. Uh, but we've got the front being a bit deeper and it's got some more of this nice detail in it. Lots of little bits, one by one plates and all the rest of it. A light shining over this side of the uh, balcony and a nice arch, eight wide. Those are quite hard to get hold of, those bricks. It took me a while. And then we've got the same sort of window set up on the front. Obviously, I'm going to duplicate that on the other side. But then this uh, sort of cutaway here actually fits right on that plate there, or tile there, rather. And it will kind of fit like that. And become, yes, seamless. <laughs> so uh, got that wall going with that wall, that with there. All looks pretty good to me. So uh, I'm going to continue that round to the other side uh, and then get this roof on using more of our lovely black slope pieces. Right, so there's our square central tower with a nice train logos on, the arches all the way through. So I think the bar will basically be in the deeper section and more windows on the back. So that will kind of fit like that. Looks very nice. Show you the back as well. Very good. So uh, the next bit is to put a pitched roof on. And to do that, I have to uh, build up kind of the arch on here that we see on the uh, metro station. We can do that with some inverted slopes on the underside and some slopes on the outside. Oh, I move to some three long ones. It's a bit of a crude arch, but I think it works well. And then uh, I wanted to add a bit more detail in the middle because often you get some sort of something interesting in the stonework. So what I thought is I'd use a four long Technic brick. And if I push a round stud into the middle one, and then I put a modified plate with clip pushed into the one on the left and the right. And it's just a very sort of simple and a bit of detail. If we get them straight. I think that'll look pretty good on there. And then we need a normal four long brick behind it. Ooh, still a bit fragile before we get the uh, roof on. There we go. A couple more slopes. That'll help. And then on the top, I'm going to do a jumper plate, a tile, another cone, another one by one round plate. So it kind of matches the detail that we've got down here. And I'm going to add some more as well to these two corners. And then I've got the same structure to go on the back. See if I can push that down all in one go on camera. It's where it goes wrong and I start catapulting pieces around the room. No, that seems to have worked. And I can put two more pieces on there for the detail. So there we have it, our ornate central building with this nice recessedness continued and these bits, bit of detailing there, and more arches here and here, this one in front of the window which looks good, more round bricks, more overhang. So basically, oh, wrong way around, it all continues this very very grand theme of the station building. And we've got our light there and there. Good! Right, so I just need to put on a pitched roof now. So here is the finished tower. 
there's the front that you'd already seen and there's just the black tiles and they're kind of recessed from these uh, front and back sort of edges and I think that looks really good actually it's kind of built in and obviously the gutters are sort of in here concealed somewhere just like they are uh, on the front of the top floor uh, yeah I think it looks really good really quite grand so here is the moment of truth then let's put on the floor of the second floor and that goes on very easily indeed looks very grand I like the fact that it sort of comes out from the ground floor even further just suggests a, a big presence and then on to the middle top the crowning glory how about that so we've got the overhang again here we've got the continuation of these things from here we've got around the edges the sort of round plate detail layer which is picked up here again as well as the tiles the black grooves obviously from here to here and all the way to here I think that looks really good also got the train logo on these fronts here which we've got on the sides of the ground floor yeah so I think that looks really grand now these columns don't look so sort of big and these shields don't look so prominent uh, and even this red window and this horrible pink and purple uh, sign look less dominant than they did before yeah I'm really liking this the combination of small windows and loads of little round bricks and round plates really work right let's uh, let's turn this around and have another look from the other side and here's the same view but from the back and this is looking just as good I think We've got even more prominent black slopes 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 so I think that all ties together well we've got uh, the columns all along the back which sort of echo into the top as well we've got these gutters on this level and on this level and two things I've added one on either side here and here are these sort of old well, they used to be used in space lego as kind of retro thrusters or something like that and i've just put a couple on in yellow and they're to act as the loudspeakers for the announcer to announce what trains are coming or late or whatever yeah and the clock looks good above this new city station sign can't wait to get my double-sided version of the same in the middle platform that'll be really good yeah and this uh detail at the top looks nice with these little towers yeah I'm really happy with it and with our cargo area at the end it's uh, really got a lot of interest on this side as well so yeah I'm really liking that and again the prominent bits of red are visible and the pink isn't too domineering good I'm really happy with it but do tell me what you think now I know this isn't what you want to hear but I think that's all we've got time for for this part of the train station build I had planned to do the interior of the top being the sort of bar area and all the tables and people and all the rest of it I had even planned to do a trial run of some tiling on these platforms because uh, the more I think about it the more I think we should at least try it uh, anyway I don't think we've actually got time for either of those things this uh, this week so I'm gonna have to call it a day there but I do think we've made a lot of progress and uh, a lot of it's down to your fantastic comments and your fantastic suggestions so uh, thanks again for those so as always thank you very much for watching it is appreciated do remember to like comment and most importantly subscribe so many of my viewers aren't subscribed it amazes me but uh, anyway uh, and next time on Robin Hood Bricks uh, we'll be doing a brick haul midweek as per usual and then we'll be going back to the city for another city update on Friday and this time I am thinking it will be the beach for those of you who were uh, annoyed we missed out and did uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle lair last uh, Friday uh, and then obviously it'll be back here to continue this build on Monday so see you then